Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. Hope you're doing well, staying safe, taking care of yourself, all those kind of things. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. Great to meet you. Thanks for stopping by. I make tutorial videos here every week showing you how I edit my photos using various software products. Today I'm in Luminar AI and my typical disclaimer is it is in beta still. So this is a workflow example for a landscape. But again, we're in beta, which means some things that I show you may change. I don't know if they're going to. I have not heard whether they will or not, but I wanted to make that disclaimer in case you end up getting the product. And at that point, if it looks slightly different, that's why. So um, as you may know, there's a lot of great features in Luminar AI. I've been talking about them in the videos that are in this playlist. I'll link to there. But one thing I wanted to do is walk through a landscape. Um, earlier today, we did a webinar for the Luminar AI Insider community, and that's the group of folks that did the pre-order. And it was just a uh, Myself and Nicole Z or Nicole Young, um, if you follow her, great photographer. Uh, also great YouTube channel if you want to check her out. But uh, her and I and uh, the Skyloom team, we just hosted a webinar and walked through some workflow. And I shared a landscape that I wanted to share here because I thought it was a, a good example of how I think about the photo and what I think of as refining the photo until I get you know it to where I want it to be, basically. So I'm going to walk through that. Here's the photo. I've already... Uh, selected the photo in my library and I kind of follow um, this uh, this flow catalog to templates to edit to export and that's I think really how it's designed I, I've enjoyed using the templates I do not think of a template as a one-click answer to every photo there are photos where you can click a template and say hey that's perfect I'm done but I'm not really that kind of editor I as if you've seen in my videos you know I like to move sliders and tinker around a little bit until I get exactly what I want that's what I'm going to do here, and that's what my typical workflow is. But also part of the refinement process of a photo for me is you walk through the workflow and then you kind of go back and redo some things. And I'm going to show you that here today. So I've clicked on templates. It suggests things. It says in, uh, for this photo in this upper right-hand corner, and there's various categories that come up. You know, sunsets is detected that because of the AI, big city lights. So it's detected that maybe some of the light would be helpful. And easy landscapes, of course, and that's the category I'm gonna choose. And I'm gonna choose this long exposure. There we go. Great starting place, not at all what I'm gonna to do to the photo. I'm gonna change it fairly significantly, and yet I think still realistically, but I wanna amp up certain things. I wanna change the composition or the aspect ratio. I wanna bring up the light, the color, things like that. So I've got my template applied. I'm gonna go ahead and click on edit and get over here and make some of those changes. The first of which is in Composition AI, and I just want to go to a 16 by 9 ratio simply because I think it fits this photo quite well, and I like it quite a bit. I want enough of that foreground coming through where you have the lines kind of leading and reflecting, but I also want a lot of that sky, and I felt like um, the original aspect ratio, which was 4 to 3 because I shot it on an Olympus camera a number of years ago, I felt like it was a little too big in the foreground. So now I've got a better start uh, for my photo. And what I want to do is now get, get over here in the tools on the right hand side and make some adjustments. As you can see, the ones that are highlighted, these are the ones that were used during that template. But I'm going to go in and make some additional edits to them. And so I'm going to click here with Accent AI. I'm going to go to about 35. I'm going to amp that up a little bit. And Sky Enhancer, I'm going to go to about 10. And then the next thing I want to do is get a softer sky. So I do this a lot. And I'm going to close that so you can see what it looks like. Um, structure AI, I'm going to do like a negative 35, negative 40. But I just want it to go into this sky. So this little spray paint can icon, I guess that's what it is. I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to increase the radius. And all I'm going to do is just paint over the sky. And I'm going to do it really quickly since this is a video, but I recommend taking your time and doing a cleaner job than you're about to watch me do. Um, but I will admit that, you know, a lot of photos, uh, depending on what the horizon line or like the edge um, of your mask is going to be, what it's up against, it may not make a difference. If it's a big shift, then yeah, be careful. But things like this, you're not really going to see it, to be honest. So I have basically softened up that sky by adding the mask. You can close the masking menu by clicking that again. And now I can increase or decrease structure just in the sky. So if I go like that to the right, it's very intense. I don't want that. I'm going to go pretty soft. I want to go kind of long exposure looking. Remember, my template was called long exposure. So I'm kind of using that uh, this negative structure to help accentuate that by smoothing out the clouds a little bit. 
Okay, next I'm gonna go down to landscape, which is already highlighted because it's been used. And they've got golden hour at five, but that's not enough for me because one of the things I wanna do is bring up that uh, sunset color in this photo. So I'm gonna bring that up to 50 to give that a little bit more pop, not a ton. Again, I'm trying to be realistic, but I wanna make it more lively. And I'm gonna do some other things in a couple of minutes that'll help me with that color. So I'm pretty good there on that first tab. And what I wanna do now is get into the creative tab and have a little bit more fun. The first thing is gonna be going into Atmosphere AI. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose Haze and I'm gonna apply that at about a 55, 56, something like that. And then the depth. So this is where I love this uh, tool because it's got 3D depth mapping. It's, it's basically mapping the distance from you know, kind of where the viewer is to where objects are. And so it sort of figures things out. And the depth here, uh, in fact, let me do this. I'm gonna make that to like 100 so you can see it better. And then the depth, as you can see, that'll bring it more forward to you in the photo. So this haze is kind of like a low line fog kind of look. I'm gonna put it at about 55, 56, something about like that. And the depth uh, here at about 35, 36. Um, it's pretty subtle, as you can tell, but if I turn this off, and if you look in that center section kind of a, along the horizon line, you don't see it because it's off, and when I turn it on, you can see there's a little bit there. I just wanted a tad, just a little bit, just to give it a little bit of mood, and I think that fits because you'll often see mist or haze coming in off an ocean like that, so I think it fits the photo, and that's how I'm using Atmosphere AI. I'm using a combination of the amount with the depth because of the 3D depth mapping, um, I think it's applying nicely and that depth is kind of pulling it forward when you need it to. Next, I'm going to toning also here on the creative tab. And this used to be called split toning, but I'm gonna move the saturation to about 18 or 20. I'm gonna leave the hue where it is. And by the way, I'm in highlights. And so all that's doing is taking the highlights of the photo and creating a little bit more redness in them. So if I turn that off, if you look at that pink over there on the left, there it is before and there it is after just a little bit. A difference would be like if, if I really drag this to the right, you can see it's really gonna hit it hard. But again, I'm not trying to go over the top. I'm gonna go 20, kind of gentle, kind of subtle, but bringing some of that pink color back, and I like that. Now I'm gonna go to Mystical just because it's such a great tool, and I'm gonna go about 50 or so here, 50, 51, but I am gonna lift the shadows a little bit, and I'm gonna go to about 45 or something there because I don't wanna create too much darkness. The Mystical tool does a great job of adding what I call like a romantic mood, but it also creates more contrast and darkness in certain areas. So there it is beforehand and there it is after. You can see it's a little bit darker. So that's one of the reasons I brought up the shadows because I do not want to obscure the foreground. Those are my lines that are kind of leading me into the photo and leading my eye into the sunset. And of course, Big Haystack Rock is sitting there. I want to kind of draw your attention to those parts of the photo. So now I'm done on the creative tab and I'm actually going to use something on the portrait tab. And this is not something that you would normally think of using with a landscape. And in fact, it's on the portrait tab for a reason and that's high key. Um, and if I drag it really high, you can see what it does. Um, it creates interesting kind of, you know, brighter sky, but I don't like it in the sky, but I do like what it did to the foreground. So I'm gonna put that at about a 40 and I'm gonna get a masking tool again. And this time I'm gonna get the gradient mask. And once I click that, I'm just gonna click and drag and I'm gonna apply the, um, the high key just to the foreground. So you can kind of see where that is being masked. And I'm gonna close that. So now if I turn this off, there it is before and turn it back on. There it is after. Kind of what it did is a little bit of contrast and a little bit of pop in the highlights. So that's kind of brightening the highlights there in the foreground and giving you a little bit more visibility into that. So if you look one more time, there it is. Highlights are a little bit more muted and now turn it back on, they're a little bit brighter. So that was an interesting little tip or trick that I tried on a landscape escape and it happened to work well for me. I, you know, every, uh, your mileage may vary, right? Every photo is gonna be different, but something to experiment with, even though it's on the portrait tab, that one in particular is not AI based and um, it's not designed to recognize humans. So um, it'll work on any kind of photo. Now I'm gonna go to the pro tab and wrap up some of this stuff. I'm actually gonna start here in color harmony and at the very bottom is color balance. Like when you open it, it looks like that. I'm gonna go to color balance. I'm gonna start with shadows and I'm gonna go like a negative five on the magenta or so, negative uh, five or six and about the same on yellow blue. All I'm doing is putting a little bit of magenta and yellow in the, uh, the shadows. In other words, I'm making them a little bit warmer, very, very minor amount, maybe not even noticeable. And then the highlights, I'm gonna take the cyan and red and go to the right and give that a 10 or so. Again, just to give it a little bit of color in the highlights. 
So if I turn that off and you look at the before photo, a little bit more muted color and the after photo, a little bit more vibrant color. Again, very subtle. I'm not trying to blow someone away and really make their eyes pop. I'm just trying to bring back some of that color. And I'll show you at the end. I mean, we've made a lot of change to this photo, but it hasn't been a significant amount of heavy editing. It's been a lot of little incremental things that are adding up over time. And you'll find that you make a big difference when you do that. Okay, now dodge and burn. One of the things I like about the photo is Haystack Rock, but it's pretty dark. So I'm gonna come over here on Lighten, and I usually recommend starting with a pretty low strength. I'll usually start around 15 or 20, and all I wanna do is do a little um, lightning, uh, which is the dodging, and I'm gonna just paint that lightning here into Haystack Rock, because I wanna create a little bit more visibility, which is gonna create a little bit more viewer interest in the photo, because your eye is gonna be drawn to things that are colorful and things that are bright. If it's dark, and muted color, you're less likely to look at it. So this was a little too dark, so I'm just kind of trying to brighten that a little bit. And I just kind of keep painting over it till I kind of get it the way I like it. And you're looking at it, and as I do it, it doesn't seem like a lot's happening, but let me turn off Dodge and Burn. And there it is before Dodge and Burn, so fairly dark to be honest. And as you can see when I turn it back on, quite a bit brighter, so that, that helps quite a bit, I think. And now here's kind of the refinement component of this video and this tutorial, and that is, I've got a photo that I really like, to be honest. You know, obviously it just has great memories for me, and I remember this evening quite well. I, I got a lot of shots that I really love. Uh, you know, a fabulous location and just stunning light. The sunset was incredible. But I'm not really done. I'm looking at it, and I'm like, you know, I'm not done. So I want to go back and refine it. And so, as I said earlier, I kind of start with catalog, and go templates, edit, and then export when you finish. But I find I do the same thing over here. I start with essentials, and then go creative, and then go portrait if I need it. Um, and professional, but I've hit professional, I'm kind of at the end, but I'm gonna go back to the beginning because I don't feel like I'm done, and that is, first thing I wanna do is take AI Accent, or Accent AI, and I wanna move that up a little bit more. I'm gonna go to 50 or so because um, I still feel like the photo was a little bit too dark, and I don't wanna lose um, you know, any of the detail in the foreground and those lines, it, it was just a little too dark. So Accent AI is perfect for that, to give me a little bit more brightness and a little bit more pop in the photo. I'm liking that. And then I'm gonna go up here to light. And the other thing is, it's really too cool for me. I'm creating a bit, um, or I'm accentuating the existing sunset mood. Although this was, it was past sunset, but there's still some pink in the sky, which we brought back, but there's too much blue. So I'm gonna go to the temperature and I wanna warm it up a little bit. So I'm gonna go to something like 6100 and just give a little bit more warmth. It's gonna, you know, it's gonna reverse a little bit of that blue and give me a little bit more warmth in the sky, which I like. And then the last thing is I'm gonna go into the color tool and go down here to HSL, which is below the fold, right? When you open it, it looks like that. So click on HSL and I'm in saturation and I'm gonna go to blue and I'm just gonna take the saturation of the blue down just like 10 or so. And it's really just that I don't wanna overdo the blue. I wanna keep it kind of tame, um, but it is blue hour. I just wanted to accentuate some of the light and tame that blue a little bit. And so that helped me do that. And that's really the whole edit. So if I show you the before photo, it looked like that. Now that doesn't include the crop, but that was a before photo. The color was really muted. It was really dark. Um, and it just, you know, it's not nearly as, as powerful of an image. And now I think it's very realistic, but we did some cool, fun things, including like high key, which is really pretty abnormal for a landscape. And I think we made the photo pop. The only th thing I might do is there were tons of birds flying around here, but like there's one up there and, and there's a bunch here. I might would have to zoom in and go take those out. I'm not sure, they, they distract me a little bit, but you may not see them too well in the video. My point is, you know, find the workflow that works for you. And in my case, it, it is to go through those four tabs kind of in order, but just because you get to the last tab and the last tool on the tab doesn't mean you can't go back and do some refinement with tools that you used before. Like I went back, made some adjustments in the light tool and in the color tool, and of course in the uh, enhance AI tool with X and AI. So, you know, keep in mind that your photo's not done just because you got to the end of the tool set. You can always go back and redo things. That's really what this was about. I just wanted to share that workflow. So one more time, there it is before and after quite a change. And honestly, if I wasn't talking this whole time and explaining things, this would be like a five, seven minute edit job. So, you know, you could do 10 of these an hour pretty easily. Now, the template is what got me off in the right foot, but I really had an idea what I wanted to do. The template was like a launching pad for me. Um, and that's kind of how I'm, I use templates. Like I said, it's a template for me. It's it's a design idea that says, 
you can go in this direction and then I go in that direction, but I go to edit so that I can do what I wanna do once I'm going in that direction because once I leave the template, I'm driving. Um, and that's what's great about uh, Luminar AI is like the template will give you the idea, but then you jump on edit tab and get into all these editing tabs, you know, essentials, pro, all those things and start doing it yourself and you take the wheel and take over. So that's it for this one. I appreciate you watching my friends. I hope you're doing well. I'll see you really soon with more tutorials and take care of yourselves out there. I'll see you later and adios.